Okay, everyone, so I'm ready for a break. So this will this is our last class before break, and uh, the homework that's due tonight is really simple. A lot of you have already done it. And then the homework that's due right after break is what we're going to cover today. And there's just really one problem. Uh, it has 14 parts, but just one problem that covers what we do today. So you can get that out of the way if you want before break, and then you have... Uh, but if you want to wait till afterwards, that's fine too. And I just want to remind you that there's this uh, R bonus. No, it's not a bonus survey, Ellen. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry. It's not a bonus survey. It was a bonus. It's a bonus R problem. Okay. So let's go to the uh, document camera. And what we're going to do today is start this logistic regression section on uh, page 201. So <clears throat> we've been doing log transforms, transforming variables that uh, aren't linear into uh, more linear ones by doing log and square root transforms. But this is different. Logistic regression is used when your, um, when your y variable is a 0, 1 variable. So far, all our y variables have been quantitative. But now we're going to use we're going to look at uh, y variables that are zero one variables. So it's um, this is used for predicting zero one outcomes, binary outcomes, success or failure, um, life or death passing or failing, anything that you can just code as zeros or one, anything that you can answer with yes, no, that's your y variable. Your x variable can be anything. Now, we haven't done this yet. All of our y variables, when we've done uh, regression, have been quantitative variables. Even when we were doing ANOVA, the x's were categorical, were categories or groups, but the y was quantitative. So all our regression has been with y being uh, a quantitative variable, a variable that you, if it was a survey question, you'd answer with a number, not yes, no. So, but very often, we are interested in zero, one outcomes. And so um, what can you do then? Uh, if our variable has just two outcomes, like yes or no, um, and we represent it with a zero or one binary variable, uh, really the best we can do is make a model that predicts the probability of getting a one for any given set of conditions, the probability of success. So um, here's, if we tried to fit an ordinary uh, linear regression where we uh, take the least squares regression line, Look what would happen. Here's a data plot that, uh, here's a scatter plot of 55 students. Um, and we're trying to predict whether or not they get into med school. So all of their outcomes are going to be, no, they didn't get into med school, or yes, they did. Now, there's a lot more than 55 people here. I can show you the real data in a minute. It's just that um, it's, you can only get whole number scores here. So more people got 10 than just one. I'll show you the data in a moment. But the, uh, the idea is that we're going to be fitting, if you fit this regression line, um, at by linear regression, what we've been doing, um, you're going to get crazy outcomes. You're going to get probabilities, like if you think this is the probability of getting into med school or not, okay? You can only get, you're either in or out. And so this could be the probability, like if you got a 10 on your uh, MCAT biological science portion, then you'd have, you could see that you have about a 60% chance of getting in. But the problem is that it predicts probabilities that extend beyond um, one and uh, zero. 
negative probabilities down here and probabilities more than one, more than 100%. So let's look at the data. That's what this regression line does. Um, it, it doesn't make sense. It predicts the probability of acceptance for like, here, we can look right here and look at, use this equation. And for somebody who got a 10, the predicted probability would be what? We're just using this equation here, and it would be negative 1.263 plus 0 0.1848 times 10, which is equal to what? That is equal to 0 0.585, 58.5%. That makes sense right here. That's what we saw. It's about 60%. But what happens if it's down here? You can see if it's somebody who got a 6, and somebody did, then it's going to predict this negative right here, negative probability. We can do it, and we'll see. Negative 1.263 plus 0 0.1848 times 6 gives us negative 0 0.154, negative 15.4%. And that doesn't make sense. You can't have a negative probability. And same if you looked up here for somebody who got a 14. It's going to be way up here. It's going to be over 100% over 1. We could do that one too. So that's negative 1.263 plus 0 0.1848 times um, 14. And we get 1.432. That doesn't make sense either. That's 143.2%. And we all know the probabilities have to be, what, between 0 and 1. So the probability is, probability is always between 0 and 1, or 0% and 100%. So linear regression doesn't work here. Our ordinary least squares linear regression doesn't work here. And it won't ever, it doesn't work with 0, 1 outcomes, ever. OK, so that's the idea. And now let's look at this data set. We can zoom out a little bit and see, and let's just uh, look at it in our data program, and you can look at it too. So we'll go over to the camera here, and um, excuse me, get out of here. Uh, why am I not seeing the escape button? Here it is. Okay, so I'm used to this computer. All right, so now um, let's just look at this. And I pulled it up here. And so here's the same equation that you see right there. And here's the same, regre the same regression line. And here you can see a bunch of people scored 9, 10. There was just two people who scored 6. And remember how um, if we do this regressogram where we look at uh, vertical strips. So we look at the two people who scored six. There's only two of them, and neither of them got in. So this horizontal, uh, these little horizontal lines represent for each uh, category, like for, n for 12, there were four people right here who scored 12. And so this horizontal line just says 75% of them got in. There was only one person who scored 13, one person who scored 14. So you can think of our regression line as the best fit through these little horizontal uh, lines that represent the you know, percentage of people who got in at each score. And you can see that it makes these ridiculous predictions for people who are actually in our data set, you know, over 100% and over under 0%. So what we're going to do, what would make much more sense, is fit this curve instead. Uh, a curve, it's called the logistic regression curve. And another word for it is lo logit. And uh, 
do that instead and you can see that it does a better fit. It sort of misses that point, but it does a better fit. And it's bounded at 0 and 1. So let's look at that. And that's what we're going to look at for the rest of the hour, this uh, how to make predictions using this logistic re regression curve. So let's go do that. All right, so here it is here, right here. And um, so, <coughs> so as you can see, it doesn't, this curve is uh, sort of an S-shaped curve. It can go this way or it could go the opposite way. And there's many S-shaped curves. So why are we picking this one? I mean, there are many curves with S-shapes similar to the one above. But the most commonly used one for zero one outcomes is this logistic regression curve because it has a bunch of nice features. But basically, um, any curve that has any equation of the form like y is equal to some function here of x over where the function f of x, it's a positive function when f of x over 1 plus f of x is going to give you that curve, that shape curve. Okay, so, but the one that we're using, the function that we're using right here is um, f of x equal to E, it's, lin it's linear in its exponent here. And it has a really nice feature because when we take the log of it, the log of the odds, it will be um, a line. You'll see that in a moment. So here's, the, uh, here's our function right here, this function, where P is the probability of success, okay? And can this equation ever yield a probability greater than 1? Can it ever go up above that? No, because its numerator is smaller than its denominator. Is always smaller than 1 plus that, right? So we know that it's bounded uh, at 1. It can't get higher than 1. How about can it ever yield a probability uh, less than or equal to 0? Can it? No. Why? Because e to the x is always greater than 0 for all x. Even as, you know, the limit as, you know, x goes to negative infinity is going to be what? of e to the x as x goes to negative infinity. As you get a negative number, you're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. You'll get 1 over e to the x, and it will equal 0. But it will never at negative infinity as a, the limit. But So it can't go negative. It can't go positive. can't go negative. It can't go over 1. So it has this nice function, nice feature here. But more important, there's a lot of curves that have that feature, but this one this one also has this nice transformation. When we take the log of p over 1 minus p, that's the log odds, you get a function that's a line, a linear. And that's really nice because it allows us to use the, um, the methods we've developed so far, the linear, uh, all the uh, very similar methods to what we've developed for lines. Okay. It's linear in x, allowing us to continue to use the methods. We're going to be able to use basically chi-square and z-tests. All right, so that's super nice. And we'll, let's highlight that. So it yields probabilities between 0, 1. And when we transform the probability to the, this log odds form, we can use the same methods, basically, that we developed for linear models. So we've got these three forms here. 
we've got this probability form right here that I just showed you. This is the S-shaped curve. So it goes like this from 0 to 1, right? Then we also have this, these two other forms. This is going to be the line, which is going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. But we're first going to, this is a probability form. And then if you take the odds, p over 1 minus p, you're going to get an exponential curve that goes from 0 to infinity, positive infinity here. And this is what uh, we want. We want a line that extends in both directions. So this right here is the line. And another word for logistic regression is logit regression. So this is often called the logit form. It's the log odds form. Okay, And then we'll have an exponential curve. And the probability form is this S-shaped curve. So we're going to be going, we want to get probabilities, but we're going to be working with, we're going to get, um, estimate uh, these parameters. So we're going to get parameters that are, we're going to get this equation right here, and then from that we're going to get the odds and the log odds, I mean the, the odds and the probabilities. And you can go back and forth between them, okay? And it's just by algebra here, it's pretty easy. You can convince yourself of this. And we're going to be going back and forth using this. So let's just do an example. But before we do, I just want to make sure, I just want to tell you that, okay, so the odds right here is p over 1 minus p. And then p right here, you can see, is odds over 1 plus odds. Odds over 1 plus odds. So that's important. And we're going to use that right now. OK, so this is basically what a lot of you have already done, this homework. And um, so we'll think about it. And it's really easy to switch back and forth between probability, very intuitive, and um, odds and probability, and vice versa. OK, so. So we have this log odds, even though it's a natural log. Um, and all right, this right here is the odds, p over 1 minus p. You probably use it in ordinary life all the time. Like if your odds are 4 to 1, that means the probability of success is four times more than the probability of failure, 4 to 1 odds. So it's basically um, the probability the odds is equal to what? p over 1 minus p. Well, what's p? Let's define p as, um, we'll say the number, we could call either one, let's call one a success. We could call it either one, but it really doesn't matter. But it's the, let's call it the number of successes, p over what? The total number of outcomes. That's, we could say p, and then 1 minus p would be the number of failures. This, and, 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 and if we're talking about either 0 or 1. So if you get a 1, we're going to call it a success. If you get a 0, it's a failure. Okay? So this is the number of failures over the total number of outcomes. So you can cancel those out, and you can see that it's just the number of successes over the number of failures. So if your odds are 4 to 1, um, what does that mean? That means that you have 4 successes to 1 failure. So then what's P? P is equal to the number of successes, 4, over the total, with the 4 plus 1, 4 fifths. Right? That's the success 
over the total outcome. So it's pretty easy. Um, what if your odds are 1 to 4? Then what would that mean? That would mean 1, 4, success to failure. So what's P? P is equal to 1 over 5, etc. So I think this is pretty simple. We can just do, okay, let's say odds are 50-50 or 1 half. Excuse me, 1 to 2. If your odds are not, if your odds are 50-50, then your probability is uh, 0.5. But this is different. Odds are 1 half, 1 to 2 odds. So then what's your probability? 1 over what? How many total outcomes are there? You know this, right? What is it? 1 success and 2 failure, so it's 1 to 3, right? What if your odds were 2 to 1? Then what would probability be? 2 to 1. What would probability be? Excuse me. I got ahead of myself. 2 to 1 would be what? The probability is what? 2 over 3. So why don't we do this one as an eye clicker? So let's just do that. So let's go to the camera. To this. All right. Okay, so uh, 2 to 3, then your answer should be what? C, correct? Great. Perfect. Okay, so not almost perfect. Let's see if it's perfect on the next one. What's the next one? Let's see. If your odds are 1.5, what's P? I said there's two correct answers here. You can think of 1.5 as what? One and a half is three halves. So you can see there's two correct answers. Just choose one of them. Did everybody get a chance to answer? Okay, so the answers could be either D or E. They're the same. And uh, it's fine. People answer D. Uh, this is equivalent. It's the same thing. So let's go to the document camera. And um, so if your odds are, we did two thirds, then P is two. The total number of outcomes is five. Now, if your odds are three to two, right here, or 1.5, you can think of it as 1.5 over one, okay? So it's either 1.5 over one plus 1.5, 
which is equal to 1.5 over 2.5, which is the same thing as 3 over 5. So if you don't see it in the form, I mean, this is odds over, this is why P is equal to odds over 1 plus the odds. So if you, you know, if you don't see it in the form of a fraction, you can just put a 1 down there and it's the same thing. It's this formula right here is exactly what we were doing intuitively. So if it's in the form of a fraction, it's easier just to say th 3 over 5. But if it's not, you could do the same thing, 1.5 over 2.5. Okay? It's the same formula. This is just more intuitive. So there's the formula right there. And um, we can fill out this chart. This is exactly, this is what you had for homework. I'm not going to fill out the whole thing. But let's just look at right here. So the probability ranges from 0 to 1. So we have this S-shaped curve that goes from 0 to 1. And then the odds goes from 0 to positive infinity. And then the log odds is just this line that goes from positive infinity to negative infinity. All right. So if your, um, let's see, if your odds, if your probability is right here at 0.5, right here, probability is 0.5, then 1 minus the probability is also going to be 0.5 or 1 half. And then what's your odds going to be? It's going to be 1 half over 1 half. You'll have 50-50 odds or 1 to 1 odds. The probability of success and failure are the same. So that 0.5 is the same as 1 here. And then what's the log of 1? zero, the natural log of zero. So that's the same as a zero here. So 0.5 probability of a half is the same thing of one to one odds or log odds of zero. Now, as you get greater than that and less than that, this is going, this right here, the probability is goes from zero all the way to one. That's what we said here, zero to one. And then the odds goes from what? Zero to um, zero to positive infinity. And then this, the log odds goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. And you can see that when you fill out this chart. We can just do the ends here, and you can fill out the rest of it, and you're doing it for homework anyway. So if the probability is 1 out of 100, then of 1 out of 100, then 1 minus is 99 out of 100. And the odds is just 1 over 99. And let's do this. The other extreme, what do we have? 99 out of 100, so 1 minus that would be 1 over 100. And then the odds would be 99 to 1. And now what happens here, if you take the, the natural log of 99, you get positive 4.6, right? And here, you're just going to get negative. 4.6. It would be symmetrical. So you can see how uh, it works. Do I need to do any more here? Or are you good? Are you good? Do you want raise your hand if you want me to do some more of these? Okay, we'll do uh, a few more. How about why don't we do right here? We'll start here. So one quarter, then one minus p is three quarters, right? Now, one quarter over three quarters, the four is, you know, it's just one over three. Right, that's your odds. And then this is going to be negative, and this is ne turn, I, you have to do this on your calculator, and I got negative 1.1. Now, if you go this direction, right, three quarters, we're just doing, then one minus p is one fourth. We have three to one odds. And what do you think that's going to be? Positive 1.1. 1 
etc. We can do one more. One fifth will be four fifths. One to four odds. And this is negative. It's going to be negative 1.4. So this way is one fifth, four to one, and positive 1.4. Okay. It's good for everyone. We have one left to do. I might as well fill it in. Okay, so this is 9 tenths, right? Odds are 1 to 9, and you're going to have negative here, and I'll tell you it's negative 2.2. This you, you have to do on your calculator. And here, 9 tenths, 1 tenth, 9 to 1, but once you know this is negative 2.2, then this is positive 2.2. All right, any questions on that? That's your homework. I hope I gave you different numbers, but I did. They're somewhat different. And if I said instead of, um, yeah, that's pretty easy. Okay. Now let's go to the next page. And now let's just do some predictions using this log odds equation, okay? So, Any questions so far? All right. Well, now the computer is going to estimate these values of, let me just make sure it gets a little clearer here. It's going to estimate these parameters. Um, we're not going to do this. It's going to do it. And the way it does it is by something called a maximum likelihood estimate. It maximizes the likelihood of obtaining our sample. So we're doing something called maximum likelihood estimates. These are not the same as those least squares estimates we've been using. They're not the same. So um, we'll talk about that more later. But for now, and if you want to read about it, it's on page 212 I talk about it. Uh, that'll be after break. But for now, we, we're going to get these, we're going to get parameter estimates here, and then we're going to do, build error bars around them and do significance tests the same way that we've been doing before. But we're going to get this analysis of deviance chart, like here, that looks very much like our ANOVA chart our ANOVA table. You can see the model. Okay, there's one degree, there's two parameters here, right? There's two parameters. Here's beta naught and beta one. So the parameters P equals two right here. And the degrees of freedom, it's the same thing. There's N is equal to 55. So we're going to get degrees of freedom. That's N minus one. Our model will have P minus 1, and our error will have n minus p. It's exactly going to be exactly analogous to what we've been doing. And in fact, this statistic we get right here for the model in this analysis of deviance chart, this is actually distributed. This is distributed as a chi-square statistic, so we can say it's analogous to the chi-square statistic. It's distributed as, so we're going to be using the same statistics, chi-squared with p minus 1 degrees of freedom, 1 degree of freedom here because p is 2, so we're going to get match up to this very, um, when what? When the null is true. And the null is going to be the same that this is equal to zero. There's no slope, no effect. So, and then the R squared is the same. I mean, it's going to be the same table. We're going to analyze it the same way. It's R squared is what? Sum of squares model over sum of squares total. And that's what that R squared is. So it will all be very familiar. That's this right there. Sorry, same thing. And this is called an analysis of deviance table. But it's, it's very much like, it's really analogous to the ANOVA thing. So it's like our ANOVA table. It's 
says like ANOVA. Okay? So let's do this. So these two. All right. So here is um, this log odds equation. So the computer returned right here. This right here. We can write as a line with beta naught and beta 1, right? But it's for the log odds, p over 1 minus the prob estimated probability, predicted probability over 1 minus the predicted probability. And we're going to go from there to that to that. We're going to get, we want to go to get the probability, OK? So use the regression equation to do, we're going to do two steps. So this is step 1. OK, we'll put BS10 in there. Then we're going to do step 2 to get the odds. And then we're going to do step 3. And then we'll get the probability. So let's from this. So let's do that. All right. So um, we'll start with this one. So we're going to say, OK, the log odds. Why did I write it like that? The log odds is equal to what? So I'm just going to say negative 12.2 plus 1.276 times the biological science score, 10. And I did that, and I got 0 0.56. OK, that's the first step. Now I'm going to do the second step. The odds are just going to be what? We're just going to anti-log both sides, so it will just be E to the 0 0.56, right? I'm just raising both, exponentiating both sides, so I get odds equals E to the 0.56. And I did that, and I got 1.75. And now my next step is the probability. So what should I do here? The probability is going to be equal to what? Think, do it this way. Put a 1 there, and now you'll be able to see what to do. It's one success over failure. It's 1.75 over 1 plus 1.75, or 2.75. And I did that, and I got 0 0.636. Or 63.6%. We can compare it to page to when we did it with the just the linear regression. We got an oak, I think we got very close to that with 10. So let's compare it to page 201. This will compare very similarly. We said it worked for 10. Well, 58.5 is what we got here. And here we get 63.6 percent. All right, so that makes sense, but it's going to work for all of them. So unlike the other one, we're not going to get a negative probability here. So let's do this again. So we'll start with step one. So we get the log odds is equal to negative 12.2 plus 1.276 times 6. And here I got this is negative 4.544. So now the second step is the odds. And we're just going to raise e to the negative 4.544 power. And I got 0 0.106. OK? You're always going to get a positive number here. And then for step three, the probability is just 0 0.106 over 1 plus that, 1.106. So we get a small probability, but it's not negative. As a decimal, I got 0 0.0105. So that's 1.05% instead of that negative percent we got before that didn't make any sense. And let's just do our last one. So I just want to show you how this works out. So the last one, we're going to start with the log odds. And we're not going to go over 100% here. We'll get negative 12.2 plus 1.276 times 14. 
and I got 5.664 and then so then the odds is just e to the 5.664 which was 288.3 that's what I got and now you can see right away that step 3 never gives you a probability greater than 1 because it's going to be 288.3 over 289.3. So it's very close to 1, but it's not going to go over 1 ever. So I got 0 0.9965, or 99.65% chance of getting into med school if you have that high a um, score. Does that make sense? All right, and now we can use, like, at what biological science score l do you have a 50-50 chance of getting accepted? So this is useful. If you're given the probability or the odds, you can then figure out what score you need for that. So 50-50 chance of being accepted. So what's that? So we have the probability is 50-50, 0 0.5. That means, you probably can see, that's a 1 to 1 odds. The odds is equal to 1 to 1. And then, what's the log of 1? The log odds is equal to 0. And that's what we can use because that's the equation that we have. You always want it to solve for it. You'll have to get it into the log odds equation because we're going to be using that equation that the log odds is equal to negative 12.2 plus 0, oops, not 0, I'm just using this, plus 1.276 times your score, times your biological science score. And now we can just sit, so put 0 in here. 0 equals negative 12.2 plus 1.276 times your biological science score. So your biological science score, you can just solve for that. Your biological science score is equal to 9.56. Okay. 12.2 divided by 1.276. Any questions on that? And it looks about right from the graph we got that 0.5 is just right below 10. That's where 0 0.5 is. And that's where the curve is changing sharp, the most sharply. So basically what it's saying is that a difference between a 10 and 11 on the biological science score makes a big difference in whether you're going to get accepted to med school when you're in the mid middle of the curve. When you're up here, your chances of getting, getting accepted are really high. And when you're down here, they're really low. A one point difference or so, you're not going to, it's going to hardly make any difference. And up here, it's going to hardly, but in the middle of, of, a cur of the curve, it's going to make a lot of difference. So those of you who are so worried about your GPAs, if you're in the average in here, it makes, makes a big difference. But if you're way up here, the difference between a 3.9 and a 4.0 is not going to be very much. And if you're way down here and get terrible score, that's gonna, not going to be much of a difference. It's in the middle where it really makes a difference. And it has a, that's how all these curves are, like this that are bounded. So if you're thinking about getting into these people who get so freaked out over a tiny little difference up here or over here, it's not going to make much of a difference. It's in here where you're, you're in the average where you really want to, it makes a big difference. Okay. Now, 
So we can look at this curve more closely. That's what we just did. And you can s we can see what we just intuitively saw. That, um, first of all, we've only been looking at the positive one. But the positive going, uh, cur going like this. But if you have a negative slope right here, then it's going to go down. So this is, that's what this says for B1 and B1. If B1 is less than 0, like instead of having um, your score getting uh, higher, if it was something where as your score got lower, then your chances, as your score got higher, like, um, I don't know, something that was how many days you're absent or something, or how many classes you missed, how many uh, courses you uh, fail or whatever, then your chances of getting in is less. It can have a negative. But if it's like, you know, some, your, the higher your ex score on the acceptance test, of course, the higher your chance of getting in. So that, um, the slope, the sign of the slope determines whether it's going down or up. Uh, that's, and the magnitude of the slope determines the steepness of the curve. The uh, and look, the steepness varies. This is what we just said. It's steepest in the middle. So slope is steepest in the middle at probability equals 0 0.5. That's where it's steepest, right in the middle. Okay, like that would be right here. This is 0 0.5, the way I drew it, this is 0 0.25 probability, this is 0 0.75, that's one, and that's zero. This is your probability right here. And the curve is steepest about right there, 0 0.5. And as you get to the ends, the wings, it gets really, it gets less, more and more flat. Okay, so that's the idea. And um, so if we look at these forms, well, looking at the slope, here you have the logit or the log odds form. This is the line right here, and the slope is constant. It doesn't change. That's the slope. But here you have this exponential curve, And this slope changes. Let's read about this. And here's our probability form. This is our S shape. So let's think about this. So here's our three equivalent forms of the logistic regression. Simple because it has one X. We're going to move next time after break. We'll look at adding multiple X's here. All right. So, um, so this odds form is often used a lot. It yields the most intuitive interpretation of this slope, okay? So if you look at this slope right here, in the odds form, so here it is in the log odds form. What does it say? It's a constant slope. It says that for each extra point on the biological science score, for each extra x, the log odds increases by that amount, by the slope. Is that helpful intuitively? For most people, it's not, thinking in terms of logits or log odds. If you get really used to it, um, if you do it all the time, it is. But most people like this odds form instead, because look what happens. Once you put it into the odds form, it means that for each extra point on the biological science exam score, the odds of getting to med school are multiplied by this E to the slope, e to the 1.276, which is 3.58. It's called the odds ratio. So this you'll see a lot. And what it is, is e to the slope of the variable you're interested in. We only have x1 here, so it's e to the slope of x1. So what is it? It's the multiplicative increase in the odds for a one unit increase in x. So it means going up one point in your biological science score multiplies your odds of getting into med school by this e to the slope. So let's look at that here. So here, 
um, you know, the slope doesn't change. Here, the slope changes by a fixed multiplicative factor. Not multiplicative you mul factor. And that's called the odds ratio. And it's e to the b1. Okay, that's what that is. And for the probability, um, the slope changes, well, depending on where on x, it's steepest in the middle, in the middle, steepest in the middle, and um, flatter flatter um, the further you get from the middle. I'll say at the wings, at the ends. the further you get from the middle. The slope changes depending. It's steepest in the middle. In fact, what the slope is, I should write this down so you'll see it. The slope is equal to what? It's equal to B1 times P times 1 minus P. So that's maximum when P is 0.5. You don't need to know that, but if you just took the derivative of this, you'd see that that's what the uh, slope is and its maximum in the middle, okay? But it changes. It's, you can't describe it with a fixed factor. You saw it. I mean, it's just basically right in the middle it makes the most difference. It doesn't, and at the ends, so it gradually increases, then sharply increases, then gradually increases. The same, it gradually decreases sharply, then gradual. So it there's, it's not by any fixed factor, okay? So that's why this odds ratio is very useful because people say, oh, your odds change by this um, constant multiplicative factor. So let's see. Um, so let's do some, uh, let's use the odds ratio. Okay, so let's see how much further we have to go. Is this really our last page? Yeah. Okay, this is our last page. So, let's write what we know here. What did we do before? We said, okay, we said the log odds, we're still going to be using this equation. This log odds is equal to negative 12.2 plus 1.276 times that biological science score. And then we said, we also said this odds ratio, e to the 1.276, is approximately equal to 3.58. All right, so, oh, it's right here. Okay, compare the odds and probability of getting accepted for the following individuals. All right, so this is what we did on the previous page. We saw the odds for biological science score of 10, right here we got this 1.75. So I want to show you how when you go from 10 to 11, you're going to get a big difference in probability compared to when you go from a 6 to a 7 or a 13 to a 14. We're right in the middle of the curve here. So we could look at this. So, all right. So if that's our odds, then the probability is just really easy. We did this 1.75 over 2.75. And we saw that that is equal to 0 0.636, so 63.6%. Now, let's say you get just one point up. That's going to make a pretty big difference there. So how are we going to say that? So if you just go, we could go from scratch and put 11 in here, get the odds, etc. But we have this already. So a one-point increase is going to change the odds from 1.75. We could multiply by 3.58, or that's the same thing as this. 
e to the 1.276 and we get 6.27. All right? So now our probability 6.27 over 7.27 is equal to approximately 0 0.86, which is 86%. That's a big difference. Whereas if we went from 13 to 14, let's do that, um, the odds, I just put a 13 in there and then exponentiated it, and I got, what did I get? I got 80.48. But now, if I just go up one point, that would be, I want to show it's not going to make as much a difference. So this is 80.48 over 81.48, and that is 0 0.988, or 98.8%. You can't make that much of a difference because it's bounded at 100%. So now, for a one-point increase, I'd say what? 80 0.48 times 3.58 or e to the 1.276 and I got 288.2. So now your probability is 288.2 over 289.2 which is hi really high but it's not that much different. It's 0 0.9965 which is equal to 99.65 percent. 99 point, you know, it's not all that different. All right, so that's the idea, and this is called the odds ratio. So let's look at this. Let's do this problem. So if you don't even know, let's say two people have a two-point difference. You don't know what their actual scores are. You just know their biological science score. Compare their odds of getting into med school. The person with the two-point higher score has what times, oh, odds of getting in? Oops, that's wrong. We're talking about odds here. That's what the odds ratio tells you. All right, so a two-point higher, so what, so you'd multiply by e to the 1.7, e, you'd do that twice, right? That's the same thing as, I should look, give you another option here. That's the same thing as e to the what? 1.276 times 2. So that would be correct. That's the same thing as 3.58 times 3.58. So these are all the same. Okay? For each point, for each point, and if there's two, you have to do it twice, for each one point difference, the odds are multiplied by e to the 1.276, that's e to the slope, which we said was 3.58. So those are all equivalent. So let's repeat, let's do this one as an eye clicker, and I'll give you the choices. Now we have a three-point difference. So let's say, okay, so here's A is 1.276 to the 3. Let's say B is 1.276 times 3, and let's say C is E to the 1.276 times 3. So which one, A, B, or C? So I'll just do that as an eye clicker. And then we're almost done. Okay. Just which one? <coughs> oh, you didn't write them down in your notebook? No. Well, um, okay, the first one is e to the e to the slope raised to the third, right? e to the 1.276 times 3. The second one is 1.276 times 3. And the third one is e to the 1.276, 3 times e to the 1.276. That's e to the 
1.276 plus e to the 1.276 plus e to the 27. It's e to the slope plus e to the slope plus e to the slope. The first one is e to the slope times e to the slope times e to the slope. And the last one is just the slope times 3. I mean, the b is the slope times 3. All right, I think I gave it away <laughs> anyway. So let's stop it. All right, so the answer was A, and let's just, yay, good. Let's go back to the document camera here. So this is, look, this is E, this is 3.58 times 3.8 times 3.58. This is just 1.2, 1. 276 plus 1.276 plus 1.276, and this is 3.58 plus 3.58 plus 3.58. You want to multiply them. You want it in the exponent there. Everybody understand? It's a multiplicative. You want to multiply each time. This right here is 3.58 cubed times 3.58 times 3. Point five eight. So this is the correct one. This is 3.58 plus 3.58 plus 3.58. That's wrong, and this is just wrong. Okay, so now if two people have a three-point difference in biological science scores, how do their probabilities of getting into med school compare? So by the way, we should do this one. Let me just multiply this out. This, when you multiply it out, is around 46. That's what this is. Okay? So it's, this is the same as these two things. And make sure you get 46. Make sure you can do it on your calculator, whichever calculator, type of calculator you're using. All right. Now, if two people have a three-point difference in their biological science scores, how do their probabilities of getting into med school compare? Well, the probabilities, when we were doing all these probabilities, we were given specific, when we were getting the exact odds and probabilities, we were given the scores, the exact scores. We couldn't do it otherwise. All we could do, what I'm asking here, is how the odds change how, by this multiplicative factor. You can't tell, you can't say what the odds are or what the probabilities are unless you're given their scores. So let's say not enough information. We'd need to know their exact scores. Um, because why? Remember, um, what do we know? We only know the odds ratio, okay? We know the odds ratio, but not the odds. So just remember this. Um, odds and probabilities change depending on x. So we can't figure that out. So we don't need it. Why the odds ratio is so useful is people. you can know that without knowing. You can describe how people's odds change without knowing um, their exact scores. But you can't figure out, without knowing their exact scores, you can't, once you know the odds, you know the probabilities. But the odds ratio doesn't give you the odds. It just gives you how they change, that's all, by that multiplicative factor. So I think next time what we're gonna do is we're just going to uh, finish logistic regression. And what I can do, you can, I think you should uh, 
just do that one problem that's due Tuesday. Get it out of the way Tuesday after break, because now this is fresh in your mind. You'll probably be able to do it. But uh, you can always wait till later when we finish when we uh, finish up lo logistic regression. So have a wonderful Thanksgiving break, and I'll see you in a while. Have a great break.